HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Sports starts up the fall season, Rebel the Therapy Dog stops by the library, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider and a new business called the Education Station opened in town. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Greyhound Friends has been in town since May 1st, 1987 and uh, has contributed and w in, in, in many ways and would, I think, be a good neighbor. As a Hopkintonian, I think enough is enough. I think that it's time that we say not in Hopkinton, not again. On Tuesday, September 11th, the Board of Selectmen will host a public hearing to discuss if they should allow Greyhound Friends to reopen. Greyhound Friends was shut down in January 2017 by state authorities. This has just been a real distraction, and um, I, I think it's um, something that really shouldn't have happened. We can't let this happen again in our town. We just can't. And if we do, shame on us. I mean, if this isn't enough, what would be enough to shut this place down for good? You have to ask yourself that. Former director Louise Coleman stated that the loser with Greyhound Friends being shut down is the dogs. It, it seems really, really unfortunate to me that um, the Greyhound Friends has been closed since January 2017. That uh, Greyhound Friends could easily have placed 300, 350 dogs. That, that the dogs have suffered for that. And also that um, Greyhound Friends is both a, a local and a global organization, and because of all of this distraction, we haven't had time to do the international work, so that, uh, again, the dogs have suffered because of that. Um, it, it, it generally has seemed to me to be uh, a, a, something that, that really should never have happened, that if uh, people had had problems with me or problems with Greyhound Friends, that they could have talked it over, that. Uh, the fact that there was a, a, a four-day bench trial, I mean, how much does that run? I mean, how much did that cost the taxpayers? I mean, it just seems way blown out of, of proportion and, uh, and really damaging. I mean, the Greyhound Friends Insurance Company has spent a quarter of a million dollars. It's, and again, the, the biggest loser in all of this has been the dogs, that uh, the tracks in Florida are closing, that... Uh, Greyhounds get on uh, the plane in Miami and they get off in Buenos Aires. Uh, it's, it's just, this has just been a real distraction. And um, I, I think it's um, something that really shouldn't have happened. Hopkinton resident Beth Malloy, who was involved with the website truthaboutgreyhoundfriends.com, spoke heavily against the business reopening. I have to say that one of the reasons why I reached out to you was because of a recent interview that you did where um, the ex-founder or the founder was referring to the uh, investigations into her as a distraction. Um, I got a little upset with that because it was more than just a distraction. There were dogs that were hurt over there. There was Hook who was attacked by two dogs and left without medical um, medical uh, help for four days, in which case all of his injuries became infected and he needed drains. There was um, Candy, who we based the um, Stand Up For Candy Facebook site on, and she came out of there and she was urinating blood and she had a bladder stone about this big in her. And it had to have been growing for quite some time. There was Emma who was picked up by Pity Love, 
And Emma came out of there after being there about 60 days. She came out of there um, coughing with uh, heartworm, full-blown heartworm, um, showing all the signs with engorged ticks all over her, and she was a mess. And that shouldn't happen in a rescue. I worked in rescue, and I know that when you adopt a dog, you have two weeks to have the dog evaluated. So how did a dog come out of there after two months with you know, full-blown heartworm and in such a condition? No matter what side you stand on, you will be able to get your voice heard at the Board of Selectmen public hearing starting at 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday, September 11th at the HCAM studios. A new business called the Education Station opened right here at 77 Main Street. They are located on the second floor and provide a number of scholastic services for nearly all student age groups. A new business called the Education Station has opened on the second floor of 77 Main Street in Hopkinton. The business provides a number of services which helps counsel and coach students. Some of the services include early reading and mathematics skills, AP boot camps, and ACT, SAT test preparations. The business celebrated their opening by offering free ice cream on a beautiful summer day. We are launching a new business here in Hopkinton. It's called Education Station, and it's sort of my dream come true. Um, my business partner, Sims Yoon, and I um, have worked together for a number of years, um, working one-on-one -on -one with families. She has been a master tutor, and I am an educational consultant um, and college-bound coach. Um, together as a mom of two children in the Hopkinton school system, we have worked to sort of develop a vision that is about enrichment and support, um, that is about helping kids to feel empowered and confident as they approach their academics and as they get ready to look at the college process later on. So we serve students between the ages of 4 and 22. We also do some career counseling and whether you decide to work one-on-one -on -one with Personalized Educational Solutions, which is our parent company, or work in small group settings here at Education Station, we are here for the community. Um, we are looking to hopefully learn more about what the community needs and um, hope to also offer some evening sessions that build community and help disseminate information about education, about parenting and about the college process which as you know is becoming more and more, more overwhelming every year so that's that's what we do thank you and uh, where can people find more information um, you can find us on the web at www.educationstationhopkinton.com um, and we are located here at 77 Main Street on the second floor right across from the dentist at Hopkinton A monthly program called Our Time Memory Cafe will be taking place Tuesday, September 11th at the Hopkinton Public Library. Here's a look at what it's all about. It can be lonely living with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. But you are not alone. Memory cafes across Massachusetts are bringing people affected by dementia together at welcoming social events. It's fun. I am so thankful to have a place where my mom and I can go and laugh and just enjoy the experience. I've made new friends. They understand what I'm going through because they are living it too. Memory cafes encourage me to try different activities, which is really refreshing. You'll find guest artists, musicians, and dancers, educational programs, or simply a place to relax and chat with others. These free gatherings are offered weekly or monthly, and you can go to as many as you would like. Visit jfcsboston.org slash memory cafe directory to learn more and find a memory cafe near you. Rebel the Therapy Dog made her weekly visit to the Hopkinton Public Library this past Tuesday. Rebel is a Swiss mountain dog who enjoys meeting people, and you can find her in the young adult room every Tuesday from 2.30 until 3.30 p.m.
Get it. So it always looks like she's not gonna get it. But How long have you worked with Rebel? Um, we had mostly since January. Nice. Yeah, I've had her about a year and a half now. Cool. You know, and she's two and a half. Is it great? A great relationship. Oh, she yeah, you? we have a lot she's of fun. Huge. Isn't she a big girl? <laughs> She's only two and a half. How do you how do you train her to do all this stuff? You know, just some practice. And I used to go into a drop-in obedience class, ready sit on Saturdays, and that was a lot of fun too. But that would just reinforce our relationship together and give her a chance to be around other dogs, where she wouldn't necessarily have to play with the other dogs, but still behave around them and you know, kind of co peacefully coexist. <laughs> What kind of dog do you guys have? A uh, Blackhound. What is that? Do you have a picture? Uh, he's like a brindle coat. Oh, beautiful. Set. He's Let's about see. as big as she is. Yep. He's I think she's thirsty. Good girl. Ready? Get it. <laughs> Good job. One more. Ready? It's really boring in a way, don't you think? Ready? Get it. Ah, I didn't get it. Come on, Come on. So, uh, I heard you do other events. Do you want to talk a little about those? Like, do you work at the school during the year? Or? I have had a chance to uh, go into the middle school and the high school, um, Hopkins and Center School, which I guess, you know, hopefully I'll get a chance to visit friends in Marathon. So it's been a lot of fun. And also the Senior Center. Yeah. And on, I try about twice a um, twice a month go to mm -hmm. I go to a hospital in Worcester, the Worcester Recovery Hospital, mm -hmm. with a group from Tufts, and uh, we visit patients there as well. That's so nice. to give her a good variety of people that she visits, she really likes this age group. Yeah. How many kids do you usually get visiting her on these Tuesdays? Um, it depends. It's getting bigger. I mean, some days just maybe two, maybe two to 15. Mm -hmm. That's Thank you. you know, I work with Denise Hildreth, the director of Youth and Family Services, and she reached out to the heads of all the town departments. Mm -hmm. And the library came back and said that they would like a visit from, um, from Rebel. And it's worked out really well. Yeah. Still to come on HCAM News, we have the latest on Hiller Sports, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. School has started, and that means the Hopkinton Hillers fall sports season has started as well. Here is a look at the latest happenings around the Hiller sports world. On Tuesday, September 4th, Hiller Field Hockey opened their season with a 2-1 win over Ashland. On Wednesday, September 5th, the Hopkinton girls soccer team fell to Holliston in their season opener 1-0. Also on Wednesday, September 5th, Holliston netted three goals as the Hillers fell in their road opener, three to nothing. Some great defensive play in the game. Holliston scored their lone first half goal on a penalty kick and then netted two more in the second half. Hillers girls volleyball opened their season as well on September 5th and took care of business against Ashland. Three to one was the final. Hopkinton took the first two sets, 25-15 in both sets. Ashland rallied in the third set and took it 25-21. And in the fourth set, Hopkinton took down Ashland 25-16 to record a win in their season opener. Morgan digs that. Mia outside to Grabmeyer. Net violation on the clockers. Hillers will take that all day long. Morgan, Mia, 
Back set, Angie. That's, and that's it. That is it. Pillars take the fourth set, 25-16, for a three sets to one victory on season opening night. What do you think, Tom? I thought it was a great performance by the Hillers, especially obviously in the first two sets. Third set, you got some of the younger group in there. You wanted to see what you got. You wanted to put them in some pressure situations, see how they dealt with it. And you had a little room to work with, so I think that's part of the reason that Coach Krabmeyer left the younger girls in there for that third set. But they came away with the victory, and that's all that matters. And I'm pretty impressed by what I saw tonight, especially yep. for game one of the season. Yep. I couldn't, uh, couldn't agree more. I think uh, it's a good learning learning point it's the first game of the season and uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more W's so absolutely I'd say player of the game Bella Ansi without a doubt and the next home game is next Wednesday 630 here at the field house uh, Bellingham comes in to play the Hillers so we will see you then a whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, September 7th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts are back and are chatting with new Hopkinton Superintendent Carol Cavanaugh on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, September 10th at 8 p.m., Jim Cousins sits down with members of the Friends of Hopkinton group about their upcoming events of town on a brand new episode of All About Hopkinton. On Tuesday, September 11th at 5.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HKM TV. On Wednesday, September 12th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls volleyball team takes on the Bellingham Blackhawks live on HKM Ed. And at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of the Margie and Lisa Show live on HKM TV. And on Friday, September 14th at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with Hopkinton resident, nurse, and volunteer Maureen Bumiller on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers football versus Whalen game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball finished the 2017-2018 season with 22 wins and three losses overall. The Hillers fell to Newton North in the Division I state championship. It was the first time the Hillers girls volleyball team competed in the Division I bracket. This year's team may be a younger team, but features some of the returning talent from last year's Division I state runner-up. Uh, hi, I'm Mia Ardell and I'm a setter. Jenna Woolworth, I'm an outside hitter. I'm Lydia Rudden and I'm a DS. Head coach Margie Grabmeyer and this year's captains are excited to get the season started. Um, I think practices are going really good. I think there's a ton of new energy on this team, but I think it's a ton of young energy and we're all super excited to have the season start. 
to get playing. I think the team this year is going to be full of a lot of new players and a lot of returners too, so it's going to be a good mix to get all the new players accustomed to everything that we're doing and I think they're going to be able to bring a lot of energy and a lot of skill to the team too, so I think it's going to be a really successful season. Um, practice is going really well, um, everyone's working really hard and the energy has been so high um, since tryouts. So I think if we keep up the um, hard work, then our season is going to go very well. Uh, how's it uh, been working with this group so far? It's been a great start to the season so far. We did lose some um, some height and some experience from last year's team, and the girls are stepping right up. I mean, we haven't really missed a beat in the first two practices, so I'm excited for the enthusiasm. Um, it's just a great vibe on this team. And. Uh, what would you say the expectation is for this team after going to the state championship for the first time in Division One last year? Oh, I don't think, I think every team has high expectations. It's just kind of built into the fiber of the program at this point. But I think that um, these girls aren't going to be happy unless they know that they're playing their best. We have a few scrimmages this week that are going to kind of set the tone so they know what they'll need to work on in order to compete at a high level. So this week is going to be pretty telling. And then we start right off next Wednesday, first game versus Ashland at home. All right, uh, and what are some of the things that you're working on right now here in these uh, early practices? Oh, actually kind of getting to know each other. These girls, it's a new team, so they haven't played with each other yet. So we're kind of working on just, you know, timing and um, basics, you know, just trying to get through basic skills and just fine tuning. So. All right, Coach. Well, we're looking forward to another season. It should be a lot of fun as usual. It's, I think it's going to be a really fun season. So let's get some uh, butts in the seats. Get a lot of fans out here. Uh, I think I, I think all of us can say that we have really high expectations. I think this is a really fun team, and I think we're going to make really great friendships, which is going to make us play harder for each other. And I think we're going to go far this year. I agree. I think that we can definitely make it as long as we set our goals high. I know this team can perform just as well as they did last year. Is there any personal goals you got stats-wise or just to do something better? Um, I personally want to do better passing, like more consistency with my passing. Um, me too, get harder serves and just uh, work hard for my teammates too. Yeah, I'm going to be hitting this year, so I want to try to make myself as consistent as possible. Terrific. And uh, lastly, how's it working with this group? Are you enjoying it? Oh, yeah. I, I think we have a fun group. Yeah, it's so fun. Where is he? The truck, I can't see a thing. You're going to be able to see Wait me. Wait a minute. So. Yeah. It's good balls. Get in there. <laughs> Last season, Hiller's football finished with 11 wins and one loss overall and won the South Sectional Championship. After a tremendous season last year, this year's Hiller's captains have big expectations. It's looking good. Um, you know, we started, everybody's got to get on the same level of conditioning and stuff, so we've been working hard, uh, keeping the energy up in practice. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing stations for a while. Make sure everybody's on the same page, making sure we're ready for anything that comes our way. And uh, I'm thinking we are, so that's good. Uh, the coaches are doing a well job of preparing yeah. everybody. Uh, overall, it's going great. Yeah, the team's looking pretty strong, ready for our scrimmage tomorrow against Hudson. Despite some heat moving in for this summer's practices, the sessions appear to be going well. I think this uh, team is capable of a lot. Since last year, we made it to the uh, semifinals. This year, we got most of the same guys back, and we got a good shot. Uh, I think this, this team is going to shock a lot of people, uh, make Hopkins a history. A few of the captains talked about some of their personal and team goals this season. My personal goal is to get back for Thanksgiving Day game or the Super Bowl. Yeah, one of my personal goals is just to be a little bit more vicious on the line. That'd be good. We're really trying to improve our run game this year because last year we depended too much on the pass game. So we're getting our uh, running backs and linemen coordinated together, getting the timing all right. Yeah, we're looking good. Despite a handful of new coaches on board, the Hiller captains seem to be enjoying the team chemistry. Uh, all of our coaches put in the work that we need for this team 
And I feel with one of our new coaches, Coach Sanborn, he coached us in freshmen, so he all knows us very well. Samantha Rose from the Jimmy Fund stopped by Weston Nurseries with a nice big check featuring the over $92,000 earned by Weston Nurseries towards the Jimmy Fund walk to benefit the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Well, today we're um, generating a little recognition for our Blooms, Brews and Barbecue event. Um, we're going to have our second annual Blooms, Brews and Barbecue on September 8th. Uh, right here where we're standing, this is a 10,000 acre, uh, we call it the Coliseum, <laughs> lawn area, park-like setting where we're going to have a band set up, uh, four bands actually throughout the day. It goes from 11.30 to 7 on Saturday, September 8th. We'll have food trucks, including barbecue of course, but also sandwiches and snappy dogs will be here and almonds ice cream from Westboro, nice. very popular uh, destination around here. They're going to be here as well. And then, of course, the craft breweries. We have a one-day liquor permit to serve beer and wine, and we're going to have uh, Jack's Abbey, we're going to have Start Line, and Marty's is bringing a bunch of craft brewers in from the area. Uh, Rachel from Marty's was really aggressive in reaching out, so she's participating as well. Last year we had about 900 people show up. We expect more than that as long as the weather's good. <laughs> and even if it's not come down, we'll have a 40 by 60 foot tent. Uh, you can watch the band, you can participate mm -hmm. with lawn games. Uh, kids are welcome. Lots of kids showed up last year, so it's $10 to purchase a ticket and 15 the day of. Food is sold and beer is sold by, uh, food is sold a la carte up to the food trucks and beer tickets are $5 a piece, which is a good deal because yeah. it's really good beer. <laughs> um, and last year, like I said, we had 900 people and we raised $5,000 for our Jimmy Fund walk team mm -hmm. and we expect to do better than that as long as the yeah. weather's good this year. <laughs> And can you talk about what the Jimmy Fun Walk is for those that don't know? Yeah, so the Boston Marathon Jimmy Fun Walk is taking place Sunday, September 23rd, and all the money raised goes to Dana Farber Cancer Institute, the research and patient care that happens there. And on walk day, you can choose from four different routes. So you can do the full 26.2 marathon route that starts in Hopkinton. You can do the half marathon route that starts in Wellesley, the 10K route that starts in Newton. And then we also have a 5K option that starts at Dana-Farber. And it all ends at Copley in Boston. And there's food trucks, there's massage tents. So for those people that walk 26.2 miles, they can kind of unwind. And it's really just a time for people to kind of celebrate their accomplishments, celebrate their loved ones, and just kind of...